Hi, I'm Paul Weiss, and I wanted to show you some of the adaptations and a very brief review of the new 2021 Trek 1120 bike packing bike. Now, the new Trek 1120 has mostly the same as uh, when this Trek bike came out, which is about three years ago. But they have made some modifications that I think were smart to do based on feedback from several reviews um, of customers. Uh, and so I want to go through that and some of the major features of the bike. There's lots of online reviews, but um, I'm a person that actually really uses their, their bikes. I'm not vociferating uh, uh, on the technical part of it, but there are some features that I think are unique to the bike and I want to go through those and talk about it. And this past year during COVID, I have taken um, half a dozen trips with this and my other uh, Trek 920, which is really a, a touring gravel bike, whereas I would call this a gravel um, more towards um, bike packing bike. There are differences, they overlap quite a bit, but there are significant differences, and I want to point those out the difference between a bike packing, a pure bike packing bike, and a, a gravel or touring bike. Um, so, some of the nice uh, features that they did make changes to this year have been to the handlebars, set up, um, and also the, the seat were, were the major changes. And they've done some uh, color changes, of course, which are kind of fun. But um, And then also the, the wheels and tire setup is, uh, is a really nice setup now. And I want to talk about my modifications of this bike. And uh, I'm going to show you what it looks like fully decked out with all the bike packing gear on it. And why I chose that specific gear, which I think is a nice setup for this bike. The fun thing about bike packing is you really need to adapt um, what you're getting to the bike that you have. Unlike touring bikes where you just get a rack front or back or both and put on standard panniers um, that pretty much fit most all bikes. Bike packing bikes are quite a bit different and this bike is very unique in its racking system um, and how it sets up for bike packing. I think it's it really was a breakthrough for the industry and Trek really led the way for the bike packing bikes and this racking system is really um, was unique in, in the field and it's really a nice racking system. There's a couple companies that are starting to you know copy this design or the basics of the design and um, for good reason because it was a really good design as long as you stay within the limits of what it was designed for. Um, so I'll talk about the specifics of it. Um, as you can see I have some parts already decked out like I have a front racking on the front fork um, and then I have some mounts but this is a really unique bike the um, just by looking at it the configuration of the drivetrain is quite a bit different um, it's, it's got a very high uh, frame bracket right here where you wouldn't see that on most bicycles. It's it's so that the geometry of the print frame is, can be compressed and it can hold a really wide tire. These are three inch tires. Um, very unique to this bike. It's a, a clutch derailleur so that means it's spring loaded. There's tension on this chain um, and that keeps the chain pretty taut even when you're bouncing over very rough terrain. Um, a single front chain ring that has very deep teeth on it so that chain won't come off the front. And so really it's a single speed in the front 
but your gear ratio is significantly high. Um, you have like a very wide range of gears, like a 50, 52, like I don't remember the number of teeth, but um, it's enough where I've never needed anything easier than that. Um, and the range is pretty good. But you do make a little bit more of a jump in the gears when you're shifting if, if you don't have quite as many. But I think it's a good um, gear ratio. Um, it's, it's an aluminum bike, so it's fairly light with a carbon fork. And the carbon fork is very strong. It has a through axle. Um, Brakes are really powerful, Shimano hydraulic disc brakes, super powerful. I mean, you just need two fingers to stop the bike. Um, fully loaded, you feel very confident in being able to stop uh, this bike on really rough terrain, so that's really a great um, braking system. I'll show you, the. there's a specific harness system that goes with this rack. Um, and the front, I'll show you how I have that set up with Vole straps um, right to the rack. It's a dropper seat post. And if you haven't seen a dropper seat post, it's, um, you can drop down. Ride it. At any you can ride th that seat at any height, which seems kind of goofy and like, why do you want that? But when you have a fully loaded bike and you're stopping on the trail, having the ability to get both feet on the ground while you're still in the saddle is a really nice feature. Also on occasional on downhills, um, you want to drop your seat down a tiny bit to get a little bit better control of the bike, be able to ride back on the seat and really bring your center of gravity a little lower. It's also nice on um, bog walks or bog bridges, which we have here in the Northeast, um, getting your center of gravity a little lower before you get on them, dropping the seat down. You feel a lot safer riding on bog bridges. Um, some of them are wet and really slippery, so you can drop the seat down and really get over the slippery, dangerous bog bridges uh, that we have so it may seem you know to some people like that's a waste of weight and gadgetry but after you ride with it it's actually really nice and useful and it really helps getting on and off the bike when you make quick stops on the bike at, like at a trail junction you want to read the sign just drop the post down and be able to put your feet down without getting off the bike. It's really nice. Um, this has no suspension on the bike, which you think is weird. And it does take some getting used to um, for some people that haven't ever ridden not a rigid frame. But there's some absorption in the carbon fork and the aluminum frame. But more importantly than that are these three inch tires. These are, these are the kind of the low end of a fat tire bike. And what's unique about this bike is not only does it have three inch um, the XR2 Bontrager tires, which are, are tubeless ready, and I have set this up tubeless, which I prefer uh, very much to tubes um, for puncture resistance, um, the way it, the way the tire rolls and feels, and also um, you know resistance. Uh, or getting a pinch flat on the rim. The nice thing about the new wheels that um, the Ringlet, Ringlet Sun wheels uh, is that the rims are very, very wide. So the three inch tire really sits widely on the rim. Why that's important is because you're getting the most out of a three inch tire. Some people mount three inch tires or bigger tires or even smaller tires on very narrow rims. And so the tire has like a bulge out circumference on it. 
and you're really not taking advantage of the full width of the tire and the power, you know, the strength of the tire and where the tread sits on the tire. This tire and rim were designed together and they're designed to be at the right tread how the tire sits on those wheels. So um, I've ridden with these on really rough terrain, gravel, rocks, roots, mud, sand. They really, really ride well. Um, they're a really well designed tire. And if you keep your air pressure low, I mean, pretty low, like below 20 pounds or more lower, um, you, you really get one to two inches of suspension. <laughs> so you, re, you do have suspension, but it's in the air pressure of the tire. So that's important to really play with the air pressure. Um, it is, as far as riding it, it rides really like a mountain bike, an aggressive mountain bike. The, the wheelbase can be adjusted a little bit here. There's an adjust, a slight adjustment on where the rear wheel sits. I have it in the forward position, so it's a little more aggressive and it reacts a little quicker, but it's a little bit, tiny bit rougher um, ride, but I, I prefer having that quick reaction. Um, so that's unique in that you can adjust um, the wheelbase a tiny bit. Um, and the other thing is, um, it, it rides really like a, a good mountain bike. Um, compared to a suspension bike, I have the Trek Fuel, which is a very similar bike. Um, and it's double suspension and all that. This bike rides really well. It, it does well uphill because you're not wasting any energy in that suspension. So on like smoother to moderately rough uphills, it actually rides better than my other mountain bike. But once it gets bumpy, like really bumpy, it's a little bit tricky because the air pressure in the tires, you get a little bit of bounce going and you don't have quite as much control as a suspension fork. Um, on moderately bumpy terrain, like a few inches, roots and rocks, it's fantastic. It's smooth as silk. You get into really rough terrain yeah, you do have to ride a little differently. You cannot ride it like a, a straight mountain bike with dual suspension. You really have to watch where you ride, weave in between the rocks. But honestly, once the bike is loaded up with gear, you would ride that way anyways, even with a suspension fork. You really can't pound, you shouldn't be pounding a, a loaded bike because it can damage a lot of different things. Your own gear, how, the, the racking system um, and you just need to be concerned about not damaging the bike when you're way out in the backcountry and I've taken this out into the way out backcountry so um, you know you have to ride smarter a little bit differently it's like with a, a solid frame gravel bike you ride a little bit differently I think you become a better rider because you're you're riding more technically than you would on a regular mountain bike you're really paying attention to what's in the trail and you're riding smarter so between riding smarter the air pressure and the thick tires you really have a very very efficient bike and I think well designed for what it was designed for you know everybody thinks you have to go for the, you know, suspension forks and frame but you really don't want that in a, in a bike packing bike like this. Um, you can do it, but you're, there's advantages and disadvantages. I mean, one obvious is the weight of a suspension bike and fork. You're adding like two, three pounds plus to the bike. And what does it get for you? You know, what is it worth it? So, um, you know, it's opinion, of course, but uh, I think this overall bike was incredibly well designed. Um, the handlebars were one of the big areas that were changed on the bike um, from what people didn't like. The original ones had like almost like mustache handlebars. They really curved back too far and people didn't like that. Um, so these are pretty much not quite straight but really nice shaped 
mountain bike handlebars. So they went back to a traditional mountain bike handlebar, and it's really nice. Um, the seat also got changed. I don't know what they were doing to start, but this is a pretty comfortable seat. You know, seats are personal preference, but um, I think this is a good overall seat. Like, it's not a junky seat that you're just going to throw out because it comes on the bike. I've actually had it on for a while now. I've done some rides, some long-distance rides with it, and I mean multi-day back, back bikepacking rides. Um, and it's been fine, actually. So I, you know, so far I'm keeping the seat. I'm not changing it out for anything else. Um, the three water bottle mounts on this one, as you can see, you know, I put good ones on there. Uh, a lot of people put frame packs in that triangle. This triangle isn't that big, so it's not really getting you that much space. So I thought it was a better use of the weight to have uh, your water, which is, you know, eight and a half pounds per gallon of weight right where it's supposed to be in the center of the bike. Um, and I'll show you the bike packing setup later, but that, that works out really well. The only issue that they call is this is the Giardia bottle because it gets full of, uh, Giardia is a, 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 a parasite that um, contaminates water and waterways and uh, because mud kicking up, you have to be careful cleaning your water bottle before you take a swig out of it. I think there's some covers you can get for that. Um, in the future, I might put on some mud guards uh, onto this, but uh, not right now. Um, these two racks, which are are integral part of the frame, they they hold a lot. Uh, the the front's rated for 15 pounds, and the back's rated for 25 pounds. So they'll hold plenty of gear for you. Um, you don't want to overdo that weight because they just aren't designed for more than that weight. So stay within those weight limits and you'll be fine. You don't need to add supports to the rack or do anything different. You can bang on this bike all day long as long as you're keeping within those specs. Um, the racking is not going to break and they are under warranty from Trek. There were some early models that had some issues um, with the weld um, or people also overloading them. And this, uh, this bike it should be fine. They've really worked those kinks out and also made it clear how much you should have on there and not overloading it. Um, I have my, I'll show you later, but I have my tent and sleeping bag and stuff on the front and then other bags on the rear, including on the top. Um, I just got really simple pedals on here that I like. Uh, and it's just, it's a really fun riding bike. Um, I've been on lots of bikes, and this is really, it, it's unique, it's fun, you know, there, you can go fatter, you can go with the fatter bike, but then you're sort of getting to the point where it's really slow, um, but it depends on the terrain that you're riding on, um, but you can really do any single track on this, um, obviously any dirt road or gravel road. Um, but it really does well on single track. Like, it really rides well. And bushwhacking. I mean, we I've done lots of really cool rides in fields and um, trails that were not really great trails uh, on this bike and felt comfortable doing it. So I'll go through the rest of the bike, what I have set up for bike packing. But those are the basics. Um, I think Trek hit it out of the park with this. It is really state-of-the-art and industry standard and very unique in the bike packing um, bike lineup. Uh, they did a wonderful job. My 920, Trek 920, for some reason, I don't know why, they discontinued that, which I'm sort of upset with. Um, and they went with a 520 and then they modified it, which is their touring bike. So it's now like a steel, uh, quote, gravel bike. Um, I think they made a mistake. That 920 was really, it is a really great bike. It's my other bike complementing this, again, on the road in gravel, whereas this is on the gravel on the trail. So I'll, I'll give you the setup on the rest of this, and uh, I think.
think you'll be excited to see how it's modified. One of the things that I use um, for this bike particular are a system of dry bags. Um, this, I like this brand, Sea to Summit. It's pretty lightweight, but it's durable. This is a little bit of their heavier duty dry bags. When I say dry bags, they actually seal completely with this dry lock closure that you have to seal up. Um, so they are um, a true dry bag. What's nice about these, they have some tie through straps. When you tie things off, you want to make sure you do that tie through there. The other thing is these Bole straps. These are 36 inch, they make different lengths. Um, they're perfect for this. You can go right through these and tie onto your frame. But the only, this is a 20 liter bag and I put 20 liters on the front of the, of the bike for my sleeping bag, tent, and pillow and pad. And then I have um, other size, um, this, these harnesses, which I'll show you how they go on the frame that come with your bike from Trek. In these harnesses, um, it can fit an eight liter bag. That's what's recommended. I, th I think it might be able to go to 10, but it might be hard to get it into there. Um, so this is an eight liter size dry bag. Another eight liter for the other side of the harness system. And then on top, um, I have a 13 liter uh, Cedar Summit. And this is, again, a little bit heavier duty um, than the other bags. Um, so a 20, 13, and two 8 liter bags. And you need uh, at least two volley straps for the front, 36 inch, and I'd recommend two volley straps for the top here and I'll show you that setup. The only bad thing about these is they don't have uh, an air valve. On the little nicer models they have a, a one-way flap air valve that when you compress it the air goes out and um, you can do it while it's closed whereas the way it is now you have to compress it and then roll it up tight. It's just a little more work. Um, those are nice though having that little air valve. So rather than show you how all these bags uh, go on, just see how it sets up. It's pretty straightforward. Um, you can see the large bag on the front, um, the 20 liter and the two side um, eight liter bags that are set up. And then also the top of the back rack uh, bag, which is uh, with the volley straps. And the harness, the two harnesses that are on the sides, the eight liter, two eight liter bags on the back, um, those clip in pretty straightforwardly. That takes a little figuring out, but you, you can figure it out how they attach. I didn't want to go through that on this video. Um, but you can see how the volley straps also hold that tap, top bag on. You know, one thing that's important is to have a rear blinker. And this is the Bontrager um, rear flare rt it mounts right to the trek um, rack with a little adapter and it comes it pops right on and off it's usb chargeable it's waterproof and it can run in a flash mode it has multiple flash modes and it even has side flashing which is nice but it also um will run all day so like if you're riding on the road all day and you want a, a blinker this can can blink all day it's important to get a blinker that will run all day or for several days because you need to have this on when you're riding on the roads. I always leave it on. And if you're riding all day, you need it to run all day. So um, make sure you get one that has a battery that can run in flash mode all day long at least or two days because um, you're going to be using it. And if it runs out midday, what, what good is it to you? So again, the Garmin GPS that mounts uh, the 1130 Plus, really high-end model. Um, 
really solidly mounted there. The advantages of, of this type of device are that you can download full topographical map sets to the entire United States. Um, it also can hit all the Russian satellites in addition to the American satellites, so it's much more powerful than like your iPhone or, or uh, Samsung uh, because that can only hit American GPS. This has much more broad uh, ability for accuracy, uh, especially in forests and trails that are in deep forests. This will work a lot better than any phone will. The other item that I have on here is the, uh, if I can take this off, uh, the Bontrager, um, it's called the Ion Pro RT. It's really a, it's a little heavy, but it's, uh, I think, 1300 lumens, and it's a super powerful light, um, and it has multiple modes. So there's multiple modes that it will do. It also has light on the side here, so you can get some uh, cars seeing you. It has a blinking, you know, high and low modes, has blinking modes, and it has, um, you know, running at super high or super low. But it mounts really nicely, and, you know, what's nice about this setup is the bags aren't blocking the light. I get full coverage of where I'm riding on the trail or on the road. And, you know, on the blink mode, this could, could go all day in blink mode, which I really like because if you're riding on the road, you really need to have a blinker on the front. It really makes a big difference for safety. I'd, I'd highly recommend it. Um, really can change, can save your life. So I would recommend that. The other piece that I have mounted on the bike right here is the uh, GoPro uh, camera mount. And I also have one that goes kind of underneath the Garmin on that same mount. So that's another option if you do a GoPro camera mount. So one of the things I want to talk about are the extra bags that I purchased for this bike, which includes these two uh, Ortlieb front fork bags, and then also these Apidura uh, top bags. Just want to go through those a tiny bit. They're really nice additions to this bike and I really like them. These Ortlieb bags just are, have a mount that goes onto the frame and you can sit, see they just sit on the forks really nicely. Um, they have a really high volume. I think they're a liter and a half and they're really a liter and a half. They're not faking it. And um, they just add a lot of space and convenience to your fork. Uh, the alternate would be to put water bottles there, but I really like this setup for how much it holds and how much you can storage in them. They have this uh, dry lock system, so these things are completely waterproof. Um, you know, you can fit a lot of gear in there, and um, they just they just hold a ton, and they're really nicely waterproof. So the other thing that's cool about these is they just have this lever lock here and you just take that off and the whole bag just comes off. You can see the frame that's left that you mount on the fork and on the back of the bag is the frame with this locking mechanism. It seems to work pretty well. Um, I've used these in really heavy duty off-road situations. They do have a back under the nylon. They're completely seam sealed and really waterproof so they're they're just great bags they really add a lot to the to the bike and they're very solid rock solid um, the triple mount so the other one is this apidora top bag and as you can see it locks can lock into a seat post but for this bike it locks into this extra frame and then it um, connects to the frame here i'm probably going to put tape on the frame so this doesn't wear out when you get in mud situations. But it's a nice bag, it holds a lot. Um, it has two compartments inside that are nice and a double zipper so you can zip it from either end. Um, and, you know, I have this thing overfilled really with a lot of stuff, but you know, you, you just can fit a lot of gear in here and this is stuff that you want 
maybe your repair kit or your wallet and keys like this is going to be my camera um, or iPhone place the zippers are really nice waterproof and you can see this top closure really waterproofs it from rain getting into the the joint of the uh, zipper um, so a really nice bag it also connects to the front has a hole in it so you can run a wire from your battery um, up to your um, electronics and a really nice bag the other bag are these these are called feed bags apodora feed bags and they're really they can hold a water bottle if you want um, or they can just hold equipment they have a little locking drawstring here which is simple nice and you know you just put in stuff that you need in here like your bug repellent your sunblock etc um, and you can put stuff on these little side vents pieces like candy bars there's even lashing areas to it um, on both sides and they lash right to the handlebar again I'm probably gonna tape this up so it doesn't rub and ruin the paint and then on the bottom it normally would mount to the fork here but I did it to the frame here which I like better it really is solid it's not moving and you can tighten it up if it does starting to loosen up but they're they're just really in here well they're not there's no they can't move around um, so it's a nice setup so those are the extra bags the Apodora feed bag and the Apodora top um, large expedition car cargo bag so yeah, I mean, these are great bags. Um, Ortlieb and Apodora really are the kind of the cutting edge, um, some of the cutting edge uh, bags out there for uh, aftermarket uh, bike packing bags. Um, there's some other brands that are very good too, um, but these are just exceptional in their quality. And it's a nice setup. Um, you know, between all of these, the, the fronts and the back, um, I would have more than enough, even on a big expedition like, you know, Baja Divide or something like that, more than enough, more than what I would need. Um, and probably wouldn't need to wear a backpack, which um, would be a good thing because wearing a backpack is really not a lot of fun when you're bike packing. Um, you know, it really adds a lot of weight to your pelvis, onto your butt, and then onto your seat, which is just not as comfortable as just having the gear on your bike and letting it ride with you. But that being said, um, you know, it is an option for some people, especially if you don't have all this fancy gear. So yeah, this is my Trek 1120. Um, I absolutely love this bike. I love the setup on it. I love what it can do. It really takes mountain biking and, and wilderness camping and combines them into one that it previously, you know, really didn't have as much, even though I love both of those things. Um, this bike is unbelievable. I mean, I've gone from just an overnighter from my house at night, leaving at 5 o'clock and camping in the local forest, and then doing a mountain bike ride the next day, fully loaded like this. Fun to do. It works great. A little bit different riding, um, a little bit more technical, you have to pay attention, but that's the kind of riding I like to do anyways. Um, when you're riding a fully loaded bike, it is different. Uh, you have to just be a little more careful and go a little bit slower, but you get great a great workout and it rides well. Um, this bike is really a remarkable mountain bike with the bike packing setup with it. Um, I, I, Trek just did an amazing job on this bike. There are other great bikes out there. I'm not trying to knock anybody else's bike. Um, just giving you the, the review of this. Um, you can do the same thing on lots of other really good different bikes. And that's what's fun about bike packing. There's all kinds of shapes and sizes. But I'm just giving you the review on this particular bike, which um, I, I really like. And I didn't get paid by anybody to say this. Uh, I... The friend, my friends down at Cycle Mania in uh, Portland, Maine, uh, got me this bike. It, it took like four months to get it, or five months, because COVID, um, the shortage of bicycles, so it was really hard to 
to get bikes right now. It's really hard to get bikes, but it was worth waiting for. I did a slow payment plan on it, and uh, you know, then I got it. So uh, been extremely happy. It was fun to outfit with this setup. I wish somebody had shown me this setup um, before. Some people have custom-made frame bags. And, you know, those are nice and everything. But um, you know, I, I like this is all marked stuff you can buy right now um, and I think it's a smart setup in what it can hold and what it can do um, this frame is just not very big for holding stuff so the water bottles do well there and I have room for everything plenty of room uh, if anything I have too much room so I have to be careful not to overload the bike but I do carry a lot of electronics like a camera a drone and etc so when I do this, I'm a little more loaded than a normal person would be, but I need that equipment to, to do these types of videos. So um, thank you, and I appreciate you listening.